Hello, my friends. Let's do the new moon solar eclipse for April 8th. Now, it's not just an eclipse because we have quite a few other things that are going to be live and active with this eclipse. So we're going to get into that. We'll talk about the eclipse and what it is and what it means, what it's all about, what we can pay attention to. It is as well conjunct the asteroid Chiron gives us a major opportunity to do our own insight, our own personal healing, as well as Mercury being retrograde. And Mercury will connect with this eclipse point, which is 19 degrees of Aries. It is going to connect with that three times. Now, before this recording, Mercury already was at 19 degrees of Aries. So we'll cover all of that today. So let me share my screen with you. And we will get started. I always want to make sure I have the chart up. There we go. This is what the new moon solar eclipse looks like just from my latitude and longitude. So don't be concerned. We're not concerned with the house placements. I did do a lecture on that. If you want access to that, let me know. I will send you the link to where you can get your copy. Okay. New moon, solar eclipse, 19 degrees. Here, let me get my face out of the way. Sometimes it covers things I don't want it to cover. And there we are. Here's Mercury retrograde. So we have that going on. So when we have a new moon, of course, new moons are always, you know, you know what? When we have a new moon, the moon is dark. And that means that we are not able to see what we want to see. Nothing is revealed to us at this point in time. All is hidden. And especially when we have an eclipse, the solar eclipse, we get two a year. Once in a while, there's more, but right now we're in that cycle of just two a year. And this one with the moon crossing the sun and really visibly be, being able to see it, whether in person or online, you know, the energy of this represents an uh, inner journey. So when we have this new moon, it's combined with Chiron, the wounded healer. I'm going to hit each of these subjects separately and that Mercury retrograde. So it gives us an opportunity to symbolically, basically like step into what we feel drawn to step into something we know we've been wanting to do for a long time. It's like a reset, you know, a new beginning, because that's what every new moon is that every single month. And it starts longer cycles, like a gestation cycle, the lunar cycle, the Sero cycle of each eclipse. There's all kinds of different cycles that are begun at new moons, but especially when they're an eclipse, that's what a solar eclipse is, is a new moon. It is an opportunity for us on a very deep level and even collectively to start working towards things. So the significance of it being at 19 degrees of Aries, so basically being in Aries, is, you know, of course, first zodiac sign, very bold, very pioneering. We are, we feel like we can initiate, we want to initiate. That's what it symbolizes, new beginnings, right? Boldness, courage, pursuing personal goals, and we feel confident about it. The Aries energy always represents just going for it, not overthinking it. It's the first zodiac sign. So it is like the first spark of life. It's the first passion. It's the first drive. All you have to do is, is think of a young child or a puppy or a kitten, you know, how they're just exploring the world and they're brave. They haven't, they haven't figured out what fear is yet. And they haven't figured out that they shouldn't do certain things. This is the pure, beautiful energy of what Aries represents and the beautiful energy that you and I can use to take steps forward where we have not done it before. This gives us a lot of, it, it kind of empowers us to take action. Okay. I hope that makes some sense for you. So we can, we can like break free from limited thinking and, you know, kind of get into alignment with what it is we want to do. Okay. So now that it is also conjunct Chiron, you can see that right there at 19 degrees of Aries. So it is also conjunct Chiron. And with that in the mix, this signifies like a big emotional 
spiritual healing opportunity. Now, where does it come from? It can come from a number of different places. Pain, unresolved issues, unresolved pain. And we have an opportunity here to address it and to confront it so we can get to this next layer of healing. So important with this new moon solar eclipse right there with Chiron. I mean, it is to the minute. You can see that 19 degrees and uh, 24 minutes. I mean, that's that's exact. That is right smack dab on opportunity for us all to find a way that to self-discovery and self-healing. And again, that Aries energy, it comes from, to be plain, Aries on another another piece of Aries, besides the action and the courage to take steps, it is it, it can come from anger and fear. You could be angry about something internally and it just has is just sat there and festered. Something has been unsaid, somebody has said something. And again, we can we're looking at childhood issues, we're looking at relationship things, wherever in life, in human living, we feel somebody has said something or we have heard something uh, that is really painful. This new moon solar eclipse in Aries with Chiron represents an opportunity for that to come to the surface. Does that sound pleasant? No, it doesn't sound pleasant, but is it an opportunity? Absolutely. It's an opportunity for us to work through something, to feel more um, alive, to feel more in alignment with, let's say, strength, and to work on what that fear is or that anger is and to address it. Now, so it's a journey, and Mercury is part of this too, so we'll talk about that momentarily. And so with this solar eclipse, new moon in Aries, conjunct Chiron, oh, it is just be good to yourself. Be careful. Driving home today, <laughs> I have to go up a really dangerous road all the time. I do the speed limit. I have an old car. I'm not a speeder anymore. <laughs> Could be. People are just driving by, every single person is driving by me like I'm standing still. And I'm going 65 and a 55. So I am going over, but not crazy over. Accidents galore on this road. And I just have to like take extra breaths and not feel the, you know, cause I could feel the energy of the anxiety of people rushing to get somewhere. And then we get to the next, you know, exit and there they are right in front of you anyways, but they've caused danger. It's just, that to me is the aggressive piece of Aries, but it comes at us and you don't even have to be the aggressor. You can just be experiencing it and feeling it because other people are doing it. So be aware of that piece of it as well. All right. So again, personally, we can feel it bubbling inside of us. Don't stuff it down. This is a wonderful opportunity to move past some self-hurt, self-negative talk, self-fear. Speaking of talking, we're now going to shift to Mercury, Mercury retrograde. So Mercury has been in Aries for a little while. Actually, I didn't have the date in front of me for that. But we know that it went retrograde on April 1st. Here, I got my notes right here. It moved into Aries back in March. We're in March. <laughs> I don't want to get it. I want to, I just want to focus on what's in front of me. So Mercury in Aries retrograde. It started April 1st at 27 degrees of Aries. But as I gave the quick synopsis in the beginning, the Mercury retrograde is going to be going over this 19 degrees of Aries three times. And the first connection was March. 21st. So I'm going to share that with you. Here it is. I'm going to make sure I'm sharing the right screen. Yeah. Terrific. 
here's the first time it was Mercury was at 19 degrees of Aries. So open your journals up. It's always really good to journal. I don't journal as much as I tell you guys to. I, I know I should. So March 21st, the whole day. Don't worry about the time of day because Mercury stayed at that degree the whole day. So even if you want, you can think of March 20, March 21, March 22, but mainly March 21st. Mercury was at 19 degrees of Aries. See, it just the day before it was conjunct Chiron. So March 20, 21, 22, I am going to include both, all three of those dates. You, journal, you look at your journal, or if you can just recall, because it's not that far long ago, what you were feeling, what may have come to the surface on that day. This is why it's important to journal, especially if you like to follow astrology um, deeper than just the superficial pieces of astrology that are abundant out here. Um, but so look that up and see what you were feeling, what was coming up. That was the first connection between Mercury and Chiron. And then here in front of us, once again, here is that new moon solar eclipse on April 8th. Mercury is now retrograde for over a week and it's coming back, but this is where that eclipse is 19 degrees. So that just says now it's really activated the eclipse. We've had opportunity from March 21st to this eclipse, April 8th, opportunity to work on something that was coming up. What are you angry about? What are you being fearful about? I <laughs> This Mercury conjuncts my Mars, and I remember the few days that it was uh, that it was there. And my uh, my dear friend and uh, mentor Kim Rogers Gallagher, some of you who see this once this goes public, you'll 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 know her. She's she's still with us. Um, I chat with her regularly, but I I messaged her and I'm like, girlfriend, I got I got Mercury conjunct my Mars today. You want to chat? And she was like, I'm for it. So I love having those conversations because you just. Fire, fire, fire. Just It's just massive amount of energy. And this is what we all can feel right now. That was my personal story. But this is what we all can feel right now with an eclipse in Aries, Chiron in Aries, and Mercury in Aries. We can feel incredibly energized. So much going on in our heads. Just what steps do I need to take? And we need to learn. We need to figure out how to slow it down a little bit. Mercury's retrograde now. We need to slow it down a little bit, okay? Well, it's retrograde as of April 1st. I don't know when you're watching this. Okay, now here is another date. There's there's four more dates and there's they're in pairs. And um, that Mercury in Aries is going to be at 19 degrees and it's also still with Chiron. Here's Mercury conjunct Chiron and Mercury is, again, they're both still at 19 degrees. So this is April 14th and April 15th. Is it the 14th and 15th? It's April 15th and April 16th. But I'm going to give it some wiggle room. April 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th. The two middle dates are the strongest. That is when Mercury retrograde, Chiron hasn't moved very far because it doesn't move quickly. It has a 50-year transit around the solar system, so it doesn't move that quick in a matter of a week. This says we are the, the energy of this Mercury in Aries retrograde is like it's, it's asking you to take action. Definitely take steps to understanding your fears and what you're angry about. And it all has to do with words. Are the again, like I I'll reiterate, is it the words somebody has said to you from a lifetime ago? Is it childhood? I think, you know, I'm in my 60s now and it just feels like I've lived a lot of lifetimes in this life. And, you know, I'm grateful for that. There's just been lots of different chapters, right? That's the the blessing of being able to grow old, like some people can't and haven't and won't and didn't. Um, back to this. Had a friend pass away. Um, and so this is an opportunity for us to really hone in on what it is we want and what it is we are uh, really in, want to engage in more than anything. And the steps that we can take to work through any communication issues, to work through any argument. And arguments can rise. Arguments can come to the surface because we, we're meant to have 
these words in this this come to the surface so we can get it off our shoulders you know we can get it out and then a healing can begin so while eclipses and everybody's just you know it's just non-stop april 8th solar eclipse are you going to go see it etc we also have these opportunities to take care of our own feelings our own inner um conflicts I want you to pay attention to your own conflicts, your own inner dialogue, okay? I want you to pay attention to that too. That's really important to pay attention to. Is there any other charts? Oh, yes, here. And then there's one more. Let me make sure I'm on the right chart. I am. Um, the, um, the third and final time when Mercury is at 19 degrees of Aries will be May 4th and 5th. Let me make sure I did that. Yes, May 4th and May 5th. And it's still within, like it's right there with Chiron. So we'll say 4th, 5th, and 6th. Chiron has now shifted to 20 degrees. However, irrelevant. Mercury in Aries, Chiron in Aries, Mercury still at that eclipse point. It doesn't stay there. It just comes back and forth. So May 5th is, is May 4th, 5th, even May 6th, because that will be the first time that Mercury, I mean, the moon will come back to its eclipse position, right? May 6th. So we have this whole month. So April 8th to around May 6th, where there's a lot going on. But those dates I just gave you are very specific. I'll put those dates in the um, the notes below, okay? So wherever you're seeing this. And please come, to my, come be on my newsletter email list because you will have this written forecast, the blog post will be posted before um, or with, or it's usually they're usually around the same time. I get them both up together. Usually it takes me a whole day to do all of these things for this one broadcast. <laughs> yeah. The written, the blog post, the newsletter. Yeah. So come join that. That's the best way to get a hold of me. And if you're watching this on social media, since that is always up in the air, and you want to stay in touch, come get on my newsletter. I'm, I'm not a massive marketer. I don't have funnel emails. I will send you something a couple times a month telling you what's going on, giving you the links to these things, et cetera. So that is um, definitely what we got going on here is um, Mercury at the final connection. So we had those three dates, March 21st, before the eclipse, Mercury was at 19 Aries. Um, at the eclipse, it was there, right? Let me make sure I'm on the right screen. I am. Um, at the eclipse, it was there um, with Chiron. The, the eclipse was with Chiron. And then we have April 14th and 15th. Ta-da, there it is. <laughs> and then May 4th and 5th. And again, all of this is written out over on my blog. So basically, in conclusion, what we have going on here can stop my share now. Here we go. So in conclusion, what we have April 8th, this eclipse is right next door with Chiron. Mercury is retrograde right next door as well. This gives us an opportunity to take our time for growth, for change, for evolution, all about new beginnings, being assertive and, you know, making decisions around our own personal goals, right? And in the meantime, with that Chiron, with Aries, Mercury and Aries making those conjunctions, making those connections at 19 degrees of Aries, you know, this just helps us to um, work through the words because it really is about what we believe, how we've, we speak to ourselves, how we speak to others, what has angered us and what need what we need to bring to the surface so we're able to process it. Again, some of this feels yucky, but it it's <laughs> talk like a two-year-old. It does. If it doesn't feel great, but it's it's necessary. And again, if you're not feeling these things, don't go pick a fight. <laughs> but you will you may witness it around you and you may be able to share this information with somebody else. You don't have to tell me it came from astrology because not everybody's into astrology, but you can say less. There's a lot of 
fiery energy in this in, in, around us right now. And the lesson to that is how do we manage it? You don't throw gasoline on it. Some people will. Now, just on a side note, that bridge just came down over in Baltimore. What a shame. And that is a, a great example of over the time period it's going to take to clean up that mess, you know, major mercury retrograde stuff. That's a great example of it. <laughs> iron, uh, Mars, uh, Aries, sorry, Aries rules iron. Yeah. And so it's going to take a long time to uh, clean up that harbor so ships can get back in. The bridge can be built again. I mean, we're resilient. So, you know, Baltimore will figure it out. I know they will. It's just fresh right now. So everybody's all up in arms, which is understandable. And, um, but it just, that's another example of on a less personal level for those of us who aren't in Baltimore, uh, Maryland, it's a, uh, it, it's another example of how this Aries energy is playing out. I know at the posting of this video, we haven't had the eclipse yet. However, we feel these things a bit ahead of time sometimes too. And there's planets already in Aries. And we just had this lunar eclipse. So that is like stirring up a lot of, a lot of things as well. So let's leave us with that. That's enough for today. Blessings, everybody. And please... Um, Patreon, guys, thank you so much. You always get this first. Once this gets to YouTube, you guys on YouTube, thank you so much. Comment, like, share. That is a way to support me over there. Blessings, everybody. Namaste.